Okay, I bought the spindle housing over here and I bought the gear from the mill. Got it over here and got it set down in there. <clears throat> and I wanted to check this depth in here to make sure that we were, we were kosher there. Um, this depth is about one, well, just eyeball one nine hundred and we're working about one four hundred there. So there, somewhere in there, there's about a half an inch of discrepancy between this and there and then I pull this out and I'm looking in here and I actually see a void uh, from where this gear here uh, sits and the bottom of where that ring goes so there's a missing component in here or the way that this is held in for thrust that I don't I can't uh, put two and two together with the parts that I have so we're gonna let that fly with that that height that we got right now we're well, within two thousandths of the original we're a little bit we're two thousand strong is what we got um, and I still got some things to do um, to to this polishing it up might remove a couple but uh, we're gonna be pulling this out of the lathe turning around and roughing off the excess on the air side of the part <clears throat> okay we're getting ready to pull this out <clears throat> and loosening it up we're hanging on to it okay now from from the chuck you get sometimes you get chuck marks and they're out here they're on a diameter that's going to be machined off of here but I don't know if we can get this over to you to actually see Anyhow, those chuck marks uh, are not, you don't want those on the outside. We got to turn this around and we got to machine off this, this excess on the outside. And what I want to do is go ahead and clean up the chuck. I'm going to clean up my mess down here. And I'm going to put the jaw extensions back on there so that I can get all the way in here on this. And then I'll lay in a thin layer of aluminum flashing underneath the jaws so that I don't put those jaw marks in on this part here so that I can face off the excess on the outside all right I went in the other room and I got some aluminum flashing I, I stock this all the time you can get this at your regular hardware store uh, this happens to be some that uh, I take some time to fold up and make uh, drip lips or whatever I need around the windows and stuff like that on the house but it also comes in handy in the shop um, also the the little squares that you can buy in a pack for like uh, bending and flashing when you're doing uh, shingle work uh, they work also anyhow I'm just gonna cut a strip off of here alright not real accurate but there we go alright move my clamp here I got one designated Bessie clamp just to hold my roll from unspinning. Okay, I'm just taking, cutting a strip a little narrower than the width that my jaws stick out. All right, we'll put the excess on over there. We got the trash. All right. Now, this, I can roll this around and I'll at least be able to catch the three jaws around this part here. All right, so let me get you an angle back into the chuck here and we'll install this ring using the aluminum flashing so that we don't put the chuck marks into the finished surface. Okay, I usually take this part, uh, the material, and I swing it around the part so I can hold it in here. And I just let the two bitter ends go loose between two of the jaws there. All right, now I'm able to just hold that firmly into the face. And then lightly tighten your chuck. And there we are, we're, we're ready to go. I'm going to bring in some indicators and I want to just touch off on a few of my surfaces there and make sure that I am running um, to the nap. Okay, we brought over our one inch indicator here and we 
we set it up on the surface and we give it a spin and we're within one thousands right there and this is open air that we're trimming to so I'm um, I'm really excited that I didn't have to work at manipulating my jaws around with the mallet or anything else like that and I'm able to get it that close there um, and this looks good all right I'm gonna set up my bit my upside down bit and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna face this down to the width and anything this has a little radius on this outside corner here we're gonna be thinking about that there and this is pretty well just sharp uh, I mean a sanded corner just so it doesn't cut anybody all right we're going for the space here and we're gonna back out we're gonna touch off all right we're just coming back outside our part set our dial here all right here's 50,000 actually I'm gonna slow this down just a little bit because one I don't want to I don't want the dust flying around All right, and we got we set back to a coarser feed here, so it faces off a little better. Cuts pretty effort, effortlessly with the uh, 50,000 cut. I think we're going to try 100,000 on the next pass. Okay, <clears throat> I don't know if this is going to work, but this is behind the scenes. So what I've done is I put a light up in, in space on my sky hook and I've got the light beam coming down I have a mirror set down here and then that mirror is reflecting the light up and underneath the insert and then I'm grabbing that shot with my note 4 kind of sitting lodged in between a uh, Babbitt block and a and a uh, one two block so let's see how it turns out we're going to go ahead and we're going to try taking a hundred thousandths off of this. The 50 went pretty easy. So here's a full hundred thousandths off of here. And here we go.
It's a little behind the scenes. Alright, we got a couple more passes to uh, knock off of this before uh, we get down to thickness. Alright, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull this tool bit out. We're done with this tool bit and we want the holder. So we'll put this bit up out of the way here. And we're going to take and do away with that. We're going to come in here and we have we have a, a tool bit here we chose and we just drug it out it's not uh, uh it's not burn up but it's not really really sharp but it's it's still a good i don't want to mess with the angle on it and uh, i think it's going to be fine for the the job here so this wider radius right here is what we're going to come in here and of course this radius on here uh is probably no more than like an eighth of an inch radius but instead of grinding up a tool, you can take a larger one like this, and then we're going to come in here and we're going to work it a little bit. We're just going to manipulate it by hand back and forth until we get that eighth inch shaped on there. So, go ahead and we'll get this in here. Now, I can have this slightly angled. And we want to make sure still that we're, we're going to have clearance here to our jaw because we, it is going to be close. When we come out to this edge, this corner here is going to be real close to the jaw, but it's going to clear by about a sixteenth of an inch. All right, let me uh, put it in neutral. Always do this swing check. All right, that looks good. Now it really does. It looks like I'm I'm high, and I'm going to go ahead and lower this down. All right, and. I can come around here to my round side here, and I'm just going to look at this uh, in general for the tip there, and we are leaning in. We need to lower it some more until it starts leaning out because we're going to be turning in the forward direction now, still leaning in. Okay, that's about equal. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit more. My combination of stack up on my tool bit there is about one inch, so it brings it almost back. All right, I'm, <clears throat> I'm at or slightly below center line now. I'm happy with that. All right, now we're still checking this. All right, we're doing good. Okay, we can come back to the forward direction. We don't need feed. We're going to run this by hand. All right, let me uh, bring you in. All right, I think we're ready to go. All right, I can start it like this and then come in a little bit. As I'm coming in, I kind of roll it out with the other hand. So I got one hand on the cross feed and one hand cranking the table, the carriage.
Okay, looks pretty good. I could get a radius gauge there, but I know that this this face here and that's got a little bit of a line. That's just breaking the corner there, and uh, I think that looks pretty good. I might just take a little bit more off this outside here. Okay, I like that. Okay, we're all done with the cutting in the lathe. And get my little piece of paper here. Let's stretch this back as far as we can without mo moving too much of our debris here because we want to clean this up as soon as we get done. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna speed this up a little bit. Now I'm just massaging this inside here, just so it's not sharp. Nice. Okay, all the lathe work is done on this part. And I think we're ready to go into the mill. Pretty cool.